Good morning and welcome to a new vlog in a slightly chaotic kitchen. <laughs> Coco's friends are leaving this morning having had their sleepover which was so much fun and I thought I'd start this week's vlog today because we are going to Goodwood and I'm just making a picnic so it's ladies day and the hair is slightly crazy I've just taken the rollers out I've put my makeup on I'm making a picnic. I'm not going completely to town. There's just four of us. And to be honest, I haven't had time because it's been so hectic. But I'm making a salad. This is all homegrown lettuce, which is very exciting. This is mozzarella and peach. These wonderful flat peaches are seriously delicious at the moment. Gussie and I popped... Um, to the butchers and the greengrocers yesterday on our way to pick up Arch from Golf. So I picked these up and I'm going to put some Parma ham in here as well. I made early this morning here, in fact, you can't see it, let me show you, I'm off it, like a kind of pizza thing, um, which I will just warm through before we go. So when we get there and eat our picnic it's warm um so it, it's basically tomato mozzarella um some cheddar cheese and some basil on puff pastry it's quite a, a nice way to do it like a sort of slightly more grown-up pizza so i have done that i'm doing this i've got some smoked salmon and some you know just some bits and pieces and then i've got some fruit to do with meringues for pudding. So nice and simple and easy. I know which dress I'm going to wear, one that I bought from Juliana, so I will show you that later. But I thought I would take you along to Goodwood and then, um, I did warn you, there's a lot of horses. And then I would share with you um, the side saddle demo that Coco and I are doing, because that is coming up soon. And then we've got a pack for our holiday. So I am just getting all my bits together that I need to take and what have you. I can just hear the girls coming in. So I am going to finish making this salad. I'm actually just gonna serve it with a balsamic glaze. Um, this one, I'm just gonna pop it in and just squeeze that over literally just before we serve it and it's really delicious really simple really easy fresh and yummy so here we are at goodwood with our picnic my gorgeous gorgeous friend charlotte she's so elegant and her husband oliver there and Sai there and this is our little picnic set up for for, um, for our lunch before we head over to the races which is um really exciting it's such a treat to be here the weather is gorgeous which um makes it even more exciting so we've just had our picnic in the back of the car which is so much fun and now we've got this lovely 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 chap driving us to the races which is terribly similar i'm quite sure how the boys arranged it but they did are doing a side saddle demonstration as part of the team, which is really exciting. I'm not as nervous as I was last time. So we did one, I think it was back in April. It's a little bit nervous. Butterflies in the tummy and all of that. But I've got my stock on. I've done my bun. I've just done Coco's hair. Di has arrived. She's come to help me. She's so amazing. In fact, she came to help me this morning at home. I wanted to vlog at home, but to be honest, trying to plan two, two, I was going to say two ponies. Colin is not a pony. It was just quite full on and quite frantic. And dear Di, it's her birthday. She's come to help on her birthday. She's such a sweetheart. Simon and the boys are coming later. And then we've got a mad dash to take the ponies home. 
and go to my uncle's for a family barbecue this afternoon which will be really lovely to see all of them it's been a long time since we have all been together anyway i must stop talking to you and i must crack on and get get the horses out and start getting them ready i'm getting a bit more ready top hats on i've just got to do my veil put my jacket on my apron on keko is on board and i'm just going to do the finishing touches and get on dry them out <laughs> have a sip of water and just breathe and relax it's fine <sighs> wish me luck quite good at these quick turnarounds. We um, got back from the side saddle thing this morning, which went well. Colin was pretty good. The ground was really hard and it was also on a slope, so we were a little bit limited to what we could do, but the ponies were great. And Di was super, super helpful. Sai came, didn't you darling? Came to watch us. And we are now on our way to my uncle's house for a family barbecue. My hair is looking great. But I've put a dress on and we are whizzing, whizzing over there um, to see them all, which will be really lovely. Coco has got Pony Club Camp, which starts tomorrow. So we were busy yesterday getting as much as we possibly could ready for camp. She's taking the hooch. It's the first time she's done um, Pony Club Camp for a few years because she couldn't take Cassie. Um, oh look, <laughs> there's Arch in the background. Anyway, so we've got most done. We've just got to do a little few bits this evening when we get back and then tomorrow morning. But luckily it's not an early start, which is a relief because um, this morning was quite an early one. Getting too plaited and too ready, um, looking looking smart and turned out well. It's always, um, and particularly when you're out of the habit of doing it, if you're doing it like every weekend, then it's much easier. But I haven't done it. We haven't done any competitions for a while, so um, it's all a little bit, a little bit hectic when you're out of the swing of things. Anyway, I have got some sewing to do. I've got a cardigan that needs um, mending. <laughs> I've got my uh, in here, needle and thread and scissors. <laughs> so I'm going to do some darning in the car and um, and chat to Sai. Anyway, um, I hope you enjoyed watching this morning's um, side saddle display. Good morning. The boys have gone off with Simon and Keiko has got Pony Club Camp, which starts today. But I was just doing a few a few jobs because Coco has got, she's so good. She's up the yard doing everything. And so I, I will go and help her in a moment. But this shower uh, head is one of those sort of bath attachments. It's full of lime scale. Now this is what I call cleaning vinegar because you can reuse it. So this is just malt vinegar. And I'm literally just going to pour it over and I'm also going to pour it down inside. And then I'm going to leave it all day, rinse it out this evening, put the vinegar back in here in the cleaning cupboard and I want to say, Bob's your uncle. It's done. I actually need to top the vinegar up. I have another bottle. You can use malt vinegar, you can use white vinegar, it doesn't matter. Um, but just make sure that the shower head is completely submerged in vinegar. Leave it to do its thing and it removes all the lime scale. And I love the fact that you can put it back in here so you're not wasting it. But I just thought as I was doing that job, I would share it with you. I'm going to go up to the yard now. The farrier has also arrived, so I'm going to go and see him and then head off to Pony Club in about an hour. So the car is full with everything for camp. The trailer has also got hay. Oh, actually, you can't see it. It's hidden behind there. Hay and a wheelbarrow for Hooch. Hooch is looking very smart up there with Coco. The farrier is just finishing off Colin. Cassie is done. And we are heading off to Pony Club, aren't we, darling? 
there's a handsome boy. He's a big fella, just having his feet done. And then dear Cassie in here. Anyway, we must load Hooch up and head off to Pinch. I'm just out walking the dogs. Oh dear, the funniest thing. Well, we're laughing. We're, in fact, we've just laughed. We've just laughed non-stop about this. Um, so we arrived at Pony Club and there was no one there. And we didn't see any trailers. We couldn't see any activity. And we got the wrong day. <laughs> it starts tomorrow. Anyway, I um, I think because I've just rejoined Coco into the Pony Club because she couldn't do all Pony Club activities on Cassie, which is why we've got second Pony Hooch. And so it's all been a little bit of a rush and I didn't get the like the full camp info. And I'm sure I saw the date as Monday the 1st till Saturday the 6th. But anyway, I got it wrong. I'm not quite sure how. I looked through all, like on all the paperwork and all the forms. It doesn't have any dates. And there was one email from the organizer saying, see you on Tuesday. And I thought, well, it's a little bit odd that she's not gonna be there on Monday. But I thought maybe she'd made a mistake or whatever. Anyway, everything is ready. Everything is loaded. Cokes and I had a really good laugh about it. We ate our packed lunch in the car on the way home. And it's going to be easy peasy tomorrow. We also there now know where we're going because we'd never been there before. So it's all organised. It's all totally, totally fine. I got a whole load of admin down this afternoon that I wasn't planning on having time for. So actually, in some ways, I'm ahead of the game, which is always quite exciting. Anyhow, I'm just out walking the dogs. And then I've got a few more bits to do. And I need to start go, getting ready because actually Coco's not doing the last day of camp because we are going on holiday. So I need to go up into the attic and get my holiday clothes out. Have a good look through, a good sort, work out what I want to take, what fits, what doesn't, etc, etc. So that is my plan later on. And um, I'm going to do that first without vlogging it. Have a good sort through and then share with you my packing tips and what I am planning on taking. I think it's gonna be really, really hot. So loose and floaty is kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. But we haven't done an abroad summer holiday for a couple of years. So I've got to see what I've got. I've also, Coco doesn't have much swimwear, so I didn't order last night for her. And yeah, I've just got to do some sorting, but it's fine because I am feeling under control organized and yeah we all laugh about this quite a lot cakes are like mommy don't tell anyone we can keep this secret but actually simon was like what are you doing here um to coco obviously because she's at home so you know we couldn't keep it a secret and it's totally fine and we have to laugh about these things don't we anyhow in future i will double check all the info properly so while I was walking, I was thinking, I know I saw the 1st of August somewhere. Where did I get this from? So I just went onto the website and it says, Senior Camp, 1st to the 7th of August, exact dates to be confirmed. That is where I got it from. I didn't read exact dates to be confirmed. I just saw the 1st of August and thought that is when it starts. Anyway, at least we're all totally ready. All we have to do tomorrow is load up the pony, jump in the car and off we go. And actually, I don't like going to a new venue. I always get a little bit anxious in case I'm going to get lost or I miss a turn and have to do a difficult manoeuvre with a trailer attached. So at least tomorrow we can go and I know exactly where we're going, what we're doing and it's fine. We had a little recce today. That's what we're going to call it. Take two, we are all loaded. We are ready for Pony Club. And um, we've got the right day, thank goodness. Anyway, 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 Cokes is very, very excited. She's just gone in to grab something and we're going to hit the road. I have just been for a pick in the garden. So this jug I bought from 
the vintage pieces and I've got a podcast episode with Justine from the vintage pieces um, recently I'll link in the description below you might like to listen and on the first of every month we say white rabbits white rabbits white rabbits so this is my white rabbits jug today is the first of the month so I thought I would pick some flowers and put them in here and make it look pretty I'm just going to top up the water you can see I've got some chicken wire in there because I want that to provide a little bit of structure and I don't like using floral foam, I won't use it. So chicken wire it is. This is sedum and it hasn't flowered yet. I love this vibrant lime green. When it does seed it's, uh, flower, it starts off as a sort of pale pink and then it gets a darker and darker, darker pink, but I actually prefer it before it gets too dark. So I've stripped the leaves off. You want to take any leaves off that are going to, going to be in water. So make sure that you strip them off because um, they will go yucky quickly. And I'm just going to arrange these around my jug. This is just providing a little bit of greenery, some vibrancy to our little arrangement. Now I didn't have much to pick today because I took some flowers to my aunt's for our family barbecue and so these literally are what I had that had come up literally in a day. Look at this one. The problem with dahlias is they can have quite a short stem, that one has got quite a short stem. I'll tuck that in there and that one's pretty short as well that's why the chicken wire is quite helpful just to poke these in and then I've got a few white ones it's important with things like dahlias and sweet peas that you pick them regularly so um, it encourages more to flower one in there and then I've got this one and then I've got these I can't remember what they're called but I thought they looked quite fun so I just picked a few of those to pop in and add a bit to our arrangement oh dogs are going crazy girls behave girls I think it's important when you're arranging flowers that you have a variety of heights so I'm just adding a few taller things in. Those are a few cornflowers that I had up by the greenhouse. Go, stop it! Poke those in. And then some catnint. The catnint is from the new catnint that I planted. You may have seen, um, I did, I think I put, did a video of them. Um, and they are up by the greenhouse in my peony bed for cutting flower, sort of cut flower bed. So I'm just going to poke those in and around. Tuck that one in there. And I've got one more. I shall poke in down there. I find it really helpful using chicken wire. And then I've got a few sweet peas that I'm going to add in too. Sweet peas do smell really beautiful. Let's pick that one in there. And I just thought this would be a really fun, vibrant arrangement on our table. And I really wanted to use my white rabbit's jug. And the great thing about chicken wire is you can use it time and time again, which is even better. That's what we like around here, being able to reuse, recycle, and there, uh, a quick flower arrangement in my white rabbit's jug. I'm very pleased with that. Very colourful. Right, those dogs, I think, are telling me that they want to go for a walk, so I'm going to take them for a walk, and then I need to get my clothes out of the attic and get sorted with what I'm going to take on our holiday. 
I am going up to London. I've got a few hours to myself. I'm going to meet Dan, the London chef, who featured um, very briefly on last week's video. I was cooking with him. He lives um, in Vancouver, uh, well, Vancouver Island, I should say. He's been in Ibiza and now he's in London for a few days. So I am going to whiz up to meet him and I cannot wait. I don't think we've seen each other. I think it's 23 years which is a very, very long time. And I am super, super excited. So I need to get my skates on and whiz up to London to see him. Look who I'm with, the man himself, Dan, the London chef. We have just talked non-stop, haven't we? Literally non-stop. Non -stop. Non -stop. We haven't drawn breath for the last two hours. It's so true. Um, it's see. lovely. I see Charlie on the on the screen, you know, but not actually in the flesh. And in the flesh is always much, much better. It's so much better. It's it's brilliant. And I wish you weren't going so soon. I know. But next time we're going to make make a plan, spend some proper time together. Anyway, I need to get in the car, drive back to Sussex, and um, I will see you back down there. And I need to get in a plane and go back to Canada. Yes, I hope you have a good journey. I have just got back from London having spent a couple of hours with Dan. It was just so, so gorgeous to see him. We honestly could have chatted non-stop probably for a few weeks. <laughs> so much to kind of catch up on. It was just lovely and I think it's so important to take time to go and see friends. Make that little um, extra bit of effort to go and do something. I knew that Dan was only in London for a few days and I said, is there any chance that we can get together and he came back with a few options and I said to Si, I really, really, really want to make the effort to whiz up to London and see Dan. So this morning worked brilliantly for both of us, which was just great. A few other things I want to chat to you about. Um, school uniform, I have talked about this before, but stop this video, pause it right now and go and order your uniform for your children, for whoever, whatever you need for September, go and do it right now. The time is flying by, it's whizzing. September, back to school, is gonna come around so quickly. So, you know, school shoes, trainers, all that stuff, get it done. ASAP, okay? <laughs> so that's, that's, um, that little nag over. But I just thought it was really important to remind you because a few people got in touch after a video that I talked about um, back in July saying, thank you, Charlie, we paused the video, we did it. And so reminder, if you haven't, go and do that now. Now I have been up in the attic. I have got an empty storage bag. I find these storage bags amazing. So they have this bit that you can vacuum um, to shrink it. I can't even think of the word vacuum seal, whatever. Um, and then you zip them up. And this is an extra large one, but all my summer clothes were up in the attic. Now, I say all my summer clothes, my holiday clothes. So I have, you know, stuff that I wear here in England. Obviously it doesn't get that hot. And there are things that I will wear on holiday that I wouldn't dream of wearing here, you know, today to go and do the horses in, in a dress. I will Show, in fact, I'm not going to show you. I'm not. I'm not going to show you too much today. I think, but we'll see. But there are some outfits that I just wouldn't dream of wearing, and so I pack them away in a storage bag. In that storage bag, and they are my holiday wardrobe. So I've had a lot of fun getting everything out, looking through it, trying on. It's so important to try everything on because the last time we went on a broad holiday was two years ago, and. Actually, there are some things that don't suit me anymore. Some things I've donated to Coco, some things don't fit very well. And so it's a really good time to have a sort through. I do, I want to say I'm a little bit of a hoarder. I, uh, I am, but, I, I, but I'm not at the same time. A lot of my holiday things only get worn for a short period of time. So they last for years. I mean, I've got a dress that actually needs to be ironed. It had a mark on it. So that's another really important thing is get your clothes out in plenty of time. Try them on, see if anything needs washing, see if anything needs ironing. 
had this lovely white dress and I bought that dress when I worked in London, you know, pre-children. So it's got to be like 14, 15 years old. It's only, um, it was inexpensive. It was from Warehouse, but actually it is definitely coming on holiday with us. It looks gorgeous as long as I've got the mark out. So um, I will keep you posted. I'll let you know. Um, so yeah, things, things last and I do hang on to like my sort of favourite things I've kept. This, which I will, I'm not going to show you on, I'm not going to do a try on in this video. This is what I call my Marilyn Monroe dress and I had a try on of everything, all my dresses and all my swimwear with Simon. In fact, not all of them. I sorted through and then the ones that I liked, I then showed him and said, what do you think? And he's th he thinks, I said, is this too young for me? And he said, no, I think it's got a couple more years. So I think that's going to come with us. And yes, yeah, so I've got various things hanging here. I've got shoes out. I have got my suitcase here ready. I've done various how I pack videos. There's one not long ago when we did a mini break to Barcelona and I'm going to link that in the description below if you haven't seen it go and have a look at that I thought today I wouldn't do how I pack because I've done one not that long ago and I thought it would be a bit boring for you guys so this is more me chatting about packing and getting organized so try all your clothes on get a second opinion if you're not too sure try on all of your swimwear see how you feel make sure you try everything on before you go. There's no point in not trying on, getting there and thinking, oh my goodness, this doesn't fit anymore, or I don't like it, or, or whatever. Try your outfits with shoes. I've got a selection of shoes you know, down here. So try everything on with your shoes and see what you like the look of, what works. You know, does that dress work with those shoes? Or are you taking one dress that doesn't work with any pairs of shoes that you were planning on taking and you've got to take one pair of shoes for that one dress? Is it worth taking that dress? For example, this dress here, I absolutely love. It's gorgeous, but I don't think it works with any of the shoes I'm planning on taking. I'm not going to take one pair of shoes just for one dress. So actually, I will probably leave this dress behind. But I will have, I, I haven't finalised my packing. We're not going for a few days. And I actually have got shoes that need to be washed. For example, I am wearing my white supergas now. They need to go in the washing machine. But I pack them in the bottom of my suitcase. So I need to get these washed. I'm taking them off to show you because there is a nasty mark on the toe there. So these I want to get washed before I actually pack my case. So I'm going to put these in the machine. And I just put these in the washing machine with an old towel, some washing powder, and I just wash them as normal. Make sure that you do put, um, I put a cup of, uh, a couple of large big old white towels in with them and they come up really well and I've got another pair of Converse that are here they need to go in the washing machine as well so I'm going to do those in a minute when I've finished chatting to you so yes shoes go in the bottom of the bag first and then I do clothes and I actually put toiletries at the top of my luggage but make sure that you put your toiletries in a bag. I had somebody that messaged me um, a few weeks ago. They'd had a sunscreen incident. Their sunscreen had leaked in their suitcase over a couple of expensive linen shirts. And she said, help, Charlie, how do I get the sunscreen out of these clothes? So I gave her some advice. I'll give you this advice too quickly. Scrape off as much of the sunscreen as you possibly can. I would use a knife turned upside down so use the back of a knife to scrape off as much sunscreen as you can i would try maybe using loo roll or kitchen roll to dab out any excess sunscreen and then i would actually use um washing up liquid 
because it breaks down the sunscreen quite well, it breaks down the grease in it, or something like baking soda, you probably haven't got baking soda on holiday, but wait until you get back and then use baking soda. But the sooner you tackle a stain, the more likely you're gonna get it out. So I wouldn't want to lose, leave a stain from when we arrive on a holiday to when we get back home and then tackle it. Try and tackle stains earlier, the earlier the better, particularly blood. Well, we're talking about stains. I wasn't planning on chatting to you about stains today. Blood, soak it in cold water. So Gus, actually, while we're in Devon, and I'm slightly cross with myself, I should have shared it with you and um, and talked about it as I was doing it. And I, I did it without even thinking and then thought, oh, rats, I should have shared it with you lot. But he picked an insect bite and bled on his sheets. So I put the blood-stained bits of the sheets, they're white sheets, in cold water to soak. I didn't put the whole duvet cover in, it was a double duvet, I just put the blood stains in cold water, submerged them for as long as you can, I mean 12 hours, even 24 hours, and make sure that you change the water um, maybe a couple of times over that period of time, and then wash the sheets as normal. And I got it out, which is amazing. He also got some on a towel, and I did the same same thing with that, soaking it in cold water. It has to be cold water. You don't need to add anything, just cold water works an absolute treat with blood stains. Then think about where you're going on holiday, what you're doing, what you're going to be wearing, and what the temperature is going to be. So we are going to stay in a hotel. We will be around the pool, we will be on the beach, we will be doing sporting things. We will probably have the odd excursion out to explore the area where we are and we will be going out for dinner every single night. So I need swimwear, I need kind of a couple of easy things to wear during the day, maybe a pair of shorts, a couple of pairs of shorts, a couple of tops and a couple of just easy sundresses and a couple of things just to throw on over my bikini or swimsuit. Walking, say, from the room to the pool, I don't wanna do it just in a bikini, I want a cover up. So make sure you've got a few of those things. I will take five outfits for the evenings. And we're there for seven nights, but then I can rotate a couple of the outfits. I don't wanna wear the same thing again and again. I should have space in my suitcase for enough. You could take, three or four outfits and that would be enough if you're doing that sort of holiday. Couple of pairs of shoes for the evening, a pair of flip flops and my trainers. I will be doing some sporting things. The family's all quite sporty and active so I'm sure there will be some workouts of some sort going on. So I will pack my trainers. I've mentioned toiletries and putting those in a plastic something that is completely leak leak proof I mean even you can put your wash bag inside a plastic bag that's what Simon and I do just to be you know really sure make sure that any sun creams any lotions all of that th sort of thing is in a sealed bag that cannot leak it's so important the pressure in the aeroplane either you know in the cabin and also in the hold when you are flying, things contract and things shrink. And it, you'll notice maybe if you open a tube, the cream might squirt out, or you might have a bottle of water that, you know, gets sucked in. And that pressure happens in your suitcase too. So you've got to be mindful of that with the things that you pack. Those bottles, those toiletries will get, you know, pressure from, from the plane and, and, and therefore compress and therefore leak. So it's something to be really mindful of. Pens, again, also leak. So, you know, biro is a safe thing to travel with. I don't fly with my, I mean, these are just um, uh, uh, disposable fountain pens, but I wouldn't travel with a proper fountain pen because again, the ink gets affected when you're flying and you'll find that you go to write and you end up with ink all over your hands. So that's something to be mindful of as well. Now I have a notebook, um, I have a lot of notebooks, but 
something that I really want you to get into the habit of is when you've been on holiday, do it on the aeroplane as you're flying back, just take five minutes to list down all the things that you have packed. Like redo your packing list. So you'll find that you have taken things you didn't need and you will find that you didn't take things that you did need. And if you get a really, really good list going, this is my summer holiday packing list, you can then make sure that you have pretty much everything that you need. You've got a really good list that you can work from. Obviously, if you are traveling to a different place, you know, it might be a city break rather than a beach holiday. It might be self-catering rather than a hotel. So therefore you will need different things, but you can do, you know, your summer holiday packing list for staying in a hotel and the things that you need to take with you. It's always really useful to take clothes pegs. I know that might sound silly, but if you've got a balcony, you can just peg out your swimwear to dry rather than it being blown away. Um, you know, obviously the weather might be different. So I like to take a wrap for the evenings. And I actually take this in my hand luggage because I always find on the plane, I get a little bit cold and I can just snuggle up or if a child needs something to snuggle with or you get delayed, really useful to have a wrap in your hand luggage. I also am taking little bag. Now you can use this just, you know, as a clutch, you can have, you know, take it up to breakfast with your room key and your phone and whatever else you may need. Really useful. And I'm taking my Vanessa Rose bag. Now I love this absolutely love this. This is actually going to come in my handbag because I can fold it up really small and you know when you're at the airport and you buy things so we will probably buy some sandwiches, we will buy some drinks, I might buy a magazine. Rather than getting a plastic bag I can use this bag and this is going to double up as my beach bag as well so that is super handy and my little essential pouch can fit in there nicely with my book, with my towel and whatever else I need, sunglasses and, and all of that. So those are a few tips for you on, um, on packing, what to pack, thinking about your packing. Don't rush doing it, take your time. Think about the outfits you want, think about the swimwear you want. I need to decide on my swimwear. Again, I showed it to Simon yesterday and I said, what do you think of it? And he liked everything, which is not very helpful. He said, well, <laughs> I'll help you narrow it down tomorrow. So hopefully he will later. And I can just say, what are your favorites? Um, and what looks better? I, always, I don't know, I'm really lucky. I really trust Simon's opinion. Um, and I did say to him, are my bikini days over? And he said, no, absolutely not. I have got awful stretch marks on my tummy. It's horrid and it's not as toned and it's not looking as great as I would like it to be. And I said, should I not wear a bikini? And he said, no, darling, it's absolutely fine. Don't be silly. You've got a great figure, which is terribly sweet of him. But I do... Um, I find that the high pants on bikinis don't really suit me. I haven't quite got the right shape and really low doesn't work either. So it's just it, finding what you're comfortable in. Don't take anything on holiday that you feel uncomfortable in because you won't wear it and it'll be a waste of space in your luggage. Only take the things that really bring you joy, that make you happy, that make you feel confident and um, yeah, just give a, give a little bit of thought to it. Hopefully you found that helpful, me chatting through sort of some packing advice from me. Um, next week we will be away, but I have got a video coming for you. I filmed with lovely Louise, who is a dog trainer. She's incredibly knowledgeable. And I asked on Instagram, um, ask us your dog questions and I've, I've got Louise coming so I really hope that you enjoy that episode. We didn't answer everybody's questions because we were completely inundated. We had so many questions but I tried to answer um, as many as we possibly could and there were lots lots of the same questions so obviously lots of you are having problems but um, 
Louise's details will all be linked down below next week's video. If you've got any questions, you can get in touch with her direct. And then I will be sharing snippets of our holiday, what we're up to and uh, what I'm wearing and so on and so forth. But anyway, this week has been a bit of everything. Horses, I mean, it started off with, well, with Goodwood um, and then uh, Coco and I are riding side saddle, which is just gorgeous, a little bit of flower arranging. Actually, Coco's a pony club camp um, and I haven't heard from her which I'm taking as no news is good news. And I'm so, so excited. Those of you that have followed me for a while will probably know that Coco's had quite a lot of anxiety about going, staying away. And so this, this is, is a big deal. She did a school residential trip a good few months ago, which went well. There was lots of, um, Lots of fear and anxiety from her before she went, but she did it. And actually, she wasn't keen on going to Pony Club. She's taken Hooch with her. And obviously, you know that we haven't had Hooch for very long. And she kept saying, Mummy, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I checked with lovely Di and also her Pony Club instructor that she had a couple of weeks ago a lesson with. And they both said, she's ready. She will be fine. So I really had to encourage her. But... Um, the last couple of days before she went, she was so excited, so organised. She did all of her packing, all of Hooch's packing, all of everything. It was so, so, so sweet. So I cannot wait to hear um, how she got on. I, I don't know anything, which is quite, quite, um, it's quite odd. And I've purposefully, she has got her phone with her. I purposefully not got in touch because no news is good news. And she did say to me, when she went um, on the school residential trip, she did say, mummy, please don't message me because when I see a message from you, it will remind me of home and upset me. So I've been really good. I haven't sent her a message, although I'm thinking about her pretty much every, every moment. But I will, um, I'll update you when, um, when in, in a couple of weeks time as to how she got on. Fingers crossed, all is good. Anyway, I hope you have enjoyed this week's video. I am wishing you a very, very happy weekend, sending lots of love, and I will see you again very, very soon. Um, next week with Louise, and then the week after will be bits of our holiday. So take care, and also leave me your comments down below of your essential things to take on holiday. I think it'd be really helpful and then everybody can look through the comments and see, you know, packing advice, packing tips, you name it. It'll be linked down there and we can all, all help one another. Anyway, must stop rambling. I've got lots to go and get on with. Bye.